Hello and welcome. This is the Umo Helsinki Jazz Orchestra trumpet section, and my name's Ed Partika. This is the first in a series of educational videos that we're making about big band section playing. Um, the questions and the topics that we received for these videos come from the Finnish Big Band Association. Thank you very much to the Finnish Big Band Association, all the member big bands, and Rasmus Soini for uh, collecting the information and the topics that we'd like to share with you. Um, when we were thinking about doing these videos, you know, there are a lot of educational videos out there, a lot of instructional videos, and we're still trying to sort of find our way to figure out how serious we should be, how funny we should be, how sarcastic, sarcastic or ironic, because of course with educational and instructional videos, sometimes it's uh, difficult to find the way, our way. So right now we're going to start and be fairly serious. Um, and talk about a variety of topics. And once again, I would also like to thank uh, my colleagues and friends at the Jazz Orchestra of the Konzertgebouw from Holland. They just recently did some educational videos, and they were also, for us, very, very enlightening. Um, the colleagues of the trumpet section started off with a piece, an excerpt from a piece uh, from a, a composition from a Finnish composer, Valu Halkosami, and it is called Solo Flight, and it was the winner of the Umo Helsinki Jazz Orchestra Composition Contest back in 2007. So thanks for welcoming with that. I guess one of the main topics and the main subjects that younger and more inexperienced players would like to know about is how do I become, and what do I need to do to become a better big band section player? You know, what are some of the things I need to bring to the table? What do I need to work on? I mean, I think we could probably all agree that you should be always worried or working on your trumpet playing, right, specifically, to have the technical aspects of your trumpet playing at the highest possible level. But what are some of the other tips from maybe from you gentlemen, from your professional perspective? What does a young player, an experienced player, need to bring to the table? What do they need to do to become a better section player? I think, uh, listen uh, a lot to different big bands and then try to find big bands to play in. And also different bands with other woodwinds or trumpets. Okay, great. Okay, so yeah, so playing as much as possible, of course, and listening as much as possible. Okay, Timo? Yes, and pl playing frequently. Uh, I think you should play every day something, at least 10 minutes or half an hour. And it keeps the uh, chops developing. Yeah. yeah, daily practice. Yeah, I mean, and especially, practice. I think, especially for brass instruments, that's very, very important. I know that a lot of young players, if you know, they have a weekly lesson on their instruments, very often what they'll do is they won't play for six days, and on the last day before the lesson, they'll try to cram in all the practice. So maybe that's not the best strategy. You know, playing a little bit every day is probably the best thing. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Miko, do you have anything to say? Uh, well... Not really. The <laughs> same thing. I should play a lot in different big bands and and play. And if it's possible to to play with better players than you, than yourself and uh, yeah, have a kind of strict practice routine every day. And what what the other guy said that listen to the music. Okay, thank you. And Tero, do you have anything to say? Yeah, I think Timo summarized very well that listening is the key function to get yourself a better playing. And maybe later on we can talk more about what to do, what is your position in the section, and how you should react. Well, that's, you know, I would like to, to follow up on this topic about listening. Because um, years ago, it was sort of difficult to find music to listen to, because you would have to go to a record store and then you would have to sort of know in the jazz section of the record store, well, what do we, you know, what what albums do we get to and what should we look for? And in, in some ways it was difficult, but in some other ways it was sort of easier because we knew from the Count Basie band, what's a, what's your favorite Count Basie album? I think uh, at the Sands. Okay, at the Sands. What's your count, favorite Count Basie album? Maybe the Atomic. Atomic Basie? Atomic. Okay, and Basie straight ahead. Nobody, that's, see, that's yeah, my exactly. favorite Basie yeah. album. But the thing is, when we we're talking about favorite Basie albums, everybody has one or two. So, uh, you know, in years past, it was sort of, in a, a lot of ways, easier. But now, with the flood of information that we have out there on streaming services and the availability of all this music, how do we filter? 
I mean, maybe that would be something. How do you, you know, to, to a young player who comes and says, hey, what do I listen to? Um, how, wh what advice would you give to try to filter out through all of this information that's out there? I think uh, just going to YouTube or Spotify, I think you can find lots of when you kind of follow the directions. You, but you can find a lot, but not all of it's good. No. <laughs> I mean, no, no. And, and, and I mean, and this is actually, this brings me to a point because once again, in the old, old days, you know, we're talking 10 years ago, um, you know, if, if there was a recording of a Duke Ellington piece, very often it was Duke Ellington's band. And now if you look on YouTube, any piece you give, there are 400 recordings, and many of them are maybe from bands that are not quite as good as Duke Ellington's orchestra. So, I mean, how, how would you help to filter that way, maybe? Maybe that would be more my, my question. Listen to the original. Okay, so where possible, find the original recording. Do, do actually do some research and follow it back to try to find the original recording from, you know, in many cases, the original orchestra. How would you help young people to filter? Yeah, there are also some uh, playlists online. You can search, just Google <laughs> what is the best uh, arrangement for or recording for a certain song. Okay, maybe, but also maybe yeah. big band yhdistys can help. <laughs> Exactly, or creating I mean, lists. Yeah, reading lists, or I think this is another thing, talking about playing with more experienced and better players. This would also be ask more experienced and older players for recommendations, for listening recommendations as well, right? You know, And also teacher is possible. Of course. And here's a question, actually, for you guys, before, you know, because this is still background information, before maybe when get to, we get into the trumpet section, um, how important is it to have a, a private teacher when you're trying to learn trumpet? Very important. Yeah. Very important. You, okay, very important. Your opinion? Yeah, of course, very impo important. Yes. Very, very. Yes, I think it's the main thing if you have something to correct on your playing or that's the key person to teach you right manners. Okay. Or... Yeah, I mean, well, well this, but it's very interesting to hear from all four of you that, that, that you feel it's very important because I think also for brass playing and maybe for trumpet playing, there's, you know, there's not just uh, playing the instrument, but there's so many issues with embouchure, with breathing and things. I think it's very important to have a teacher. Certain instruments seem to be um, better for autodidactic people, you know, for somebody who can, you know, sort of anybody could pick up a guitar or maybe a piano or something and sort of, you know, mess around with it. And actually some of them have become quite successful as artists. Um, but on trumpet or maybe brass instruments, it's, it's yeah, I think uh, as I defer to you guys, and I do agree, having a private teacher is very, very important. Yeah, it's good to hear an example from professional player in same room and same acoustics. Okay. Terrific. You don't you don't get the same information from YouTube or online. Exactly. So hearing live, but not just a live player. Also, if we can follow this, going to hear live big bands. I think this is also this. I, when I think back to my youth, um, you know, uh, listening to recordings was one thing. But whenever uh, a big band was playing anywhere near where I lived, I would always go to listen to it. So I think listening to live big bands, once we get out of the, the corona pandemic, um, we can go to listening to concerts again. I think once, it's, once again, something very, very important. Timo, I think you wanted to say something? Also playing duets with friends or, or teacher. Okay. Even the jazz style, swing okay. style duets. There's lots of those available. Okay, so playing, once again, so taking lessons, playing, um, and then, of course, always trying to find players who are better than you to play with and doing a lot of listening and going back and trying to find the original recordings from the original big bands to listen to, uh, to, of course, learn about all of these different aspects of big band section playing. And I think what we'll do is let's close out this section, maybe with an example, so that our people at home get to hear you guys once again in the section. And this is an exit. It seems like you want to say one more thing, Temo. No, it's not. Okay, it's just... good. <laughs> The song is Big Swing Face. Exactly, Big Swing Face. And this is once again an example of trumpet section playing. And this is once again the Umo Helsinki Jazz Orchestra trumpet section. 